morning. Welcome to worship on this day. We are glad you are here. We are glad you have tuned in to worship with us, for this is the day that the Lord has made. Let us be glad and rejoice in it. We welcome you to worship on this observation, observance of Holy Trinity Sunday, where we observe the, the three persons of God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, yet they are the one unity of the Godhead. So we continue to celebrate that on this day. Uh, even though the word Trinity, the triune, it never does appear in either the Old or New Testaments, but we use this term to help uh, describe this mystery of who God is in those three persons. Uh, it dates back to Tertullian, a early third century theologian who is often credited by using this Latin term or the Latin term Trinitas. Uh, to help explain this mystery about the three distinct persons of Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, yet they are one unified essence of God Almighty. So this is what we will be observing today. You'll be seeing this throughout our readings and throughout uh, the service this day in the hymns that we sing and also through the sermon. Also, just a reminder about this week is the week that we'll be offering communion in those small groups. If you would like to call the church, and set up a time to come. We'll be offering Holy Communion in groups of 25 or less Monday and Wednesday in the morning, beginning at 9, and then on Tuesday and Thursday in the evening. So please, if you uh, haven't done so and would like to come to one of those small worship services uh, with Holy Communion, please call the church office and uh, help reserve your spot there for Holy Communion this week. Also, later this evening, the live online Bible study will be continuing. That will take place at 7 p.m. this evening. If you would like to join the class, please email Pastor Eccles. That's at 
RevX at Hotmail, that's R-E-V-E-C-K-S at Hotmail.com, and he will send you the information so that you may uh, have that permission to be joined that live online Bible study this evening at 7. Also, just a reminder once again, even though we are not meeting in person, we do appreciate your support financially to the church and ask that you continue to have your offerings given to the church. You may do that in a few uh, various ways. Just mail it in to the church. Mail it here at 100 East Michigan, St. Paul's Lutheran, 100 East Michigan. You may stop by the church office, give us a call uh, when you're on your way or when you get here, and Zona or one of us will come out and uh, get that offering for you. You may bring it to the Holy Communion services if you come to those, or you may give online by visiting our website at stpauslcms.org, and there we have online giving, where you may give a one-time online giving, or you may have that as an automated uh, monthly, weekly withdrawal uh, from your checking or whatever kind of account that you may have that you want to connect that to. So a lot of different ways to continue to support the mission and the ministry here of sharing God's word with all generations and touching all people and generations with the word of God. Our order of service this Holy Trinity Sunday is a printed in our bulletin there that you are see online. Uh, so we'll be having the prelude following by our opening hymn, Holy, 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 that's hymn number 507. We ask God's blessings on our worship this day, and we begin with our prelude.
the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins, God, who is faithful and just, will forgive our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Let us then confess our sins to God our Father. Most merciful God, we confess that we are by nature sinful and unclean. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We justly deserve your presence and eternal punishment. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us, forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways, to the glory of your holy name. Amen. Almighty God in his mercy has given his Son to die for you. For his sake he forgives you all of your sins. As a called and ordained servant of Christ and by his authority, I therefore forgive you all of your sins in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Blessed be the Holy Trinity and the undivided unity. Let us give glory to him because he has shown his mercy to us. I have set the Lord always before me because he is at my right hand. I shall not be shaken. Therefore, my heart is glad, my whole being rejoices, my flesh also dwells secure. For you will not abandon my soul to Sheol, or let your Holy One see corruption. You make known to me the path of life. In your presence there is fullness of joy. At your right hand are pleasures forevermore. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Blessed be the Holy Trinity and the undivided unity. Let us give glory to him, because he has shown his mercy to us. In peace, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the peace from above and for our salvation, let us pray to the Lord. Oh, Lord, have mercy. For the peace of the whole world, for the well-being of the Church of God, and for the unity of all, let us pray to the Lord. For this holy house, and for all who offer here their worship and praise, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. Help, save, comfort, and defend us, gracious Lord. Our hymn of praise this morning is hymn number 805, Praise God from Whom All Blessings Flow, the Doxology.
Let us pray. Almighty and everlasting God, you have given us grace to acknowledge the glory of the eternal Trinity by the confession of a true faith and to worship the unity and the power of the divine majesty. Keep us steadfast in this faith. Defend us from all adversities. For you, O Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, live and reign as one God, now and forever. Amen. Our Old Testament reading for this Holy Trinity Sunday is from Genesis chapters 1 and 2. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. The earth was without form and void, and darkness was over the face of the deep, and the Spirit of God was hovering over the face of the waters. God said, Let there be light. And there was light. And God saw that the light was good. And God separated the light from the darkness. God called the light day. He called the darkness night. There was evening and there was morning the first day. And God said, Let there be an expanse in the midst of the waters. Let it separate the waters from the waters. And God made the expanse. He separated the waters that were under the expanse from the waters that were above the expanse. And it was so. God called the expanse heaven, and there was evening, and there was morning the second day. And God said, let the waters under the heavens be gathered together into one place, and let the dry land appear. And it was so. God called the dry land earth, and the waters that were gathered together he called seas. And God saw that it was good. And God said, let the earth sprout vegetation, plants yielding seed, fruit trees bearing fruit in which is their seed, each according to its kind on the earth. And it was so. The earth sprout forth vegetation, plants yielding seed of different kinds, and trees bearing fruit in which is their seed, each according to its kind. And God saw that it was good. There was evening, and there was morning the third day. And God said, let there be lights in the expanse of the heavens to separate the day from the night. Let them be for signs and for seasons and for days and years. Let them be lights in the expanse of the heavens to give light upon the earth. And it was so. Great lights, the greater light to rule the day and the lesser light to rule the night, and the stars. God set them in the expanse of the heavens to give light on the earth, to rule over the day and over the night to separate light from the darkness. God saw that it was good. There was evening and there was morning the fourth day. And God said, let the waters swarm with swarms of living creatures. Let birds fly above the earth across the expanse of the heavens. So God created the great sea creatures, every living creature that moves with which the waters swarm according to their kinds and every winged bird according to its kind. God saw that it was good. God blessed them, saying, Be fruitful and multiply, and fill the waters of the seas, and let birds multiply on the earth. And there was evening, and there was morning, the fifth day. And God said, Let the earth bring forth living creatures according to their kinds, livestock and creeping things, and bees to the earth according to their kinds. And it was so. God made the beasts of the earth according to their kinds and the livestock according to their kinds, everything that creeps on the ground according to its kind. God saw that it was good. And God said, Let us make man in our image after our likeness. Let them have dominion over the fish of the sea and over the birds of the heavens and over the livestock, over all the earth and over every creeping thing that creeps on the earth. So God created man in his own image. In the image of God, he created him. Male and female, he created them. And God blessed them. God said to them, Be fruitful and multiply, and fill the earth and subdue it, and have dominion over the fish of the sea and over the birds of the heavens and over every living thing that moves on the earth. And God said, Behold, 
I have given you every plant yielding seed that is on the face of all the earth, and every tree with its seed and its fruit. You shall have them for food. To every beast of the earth, to every bird of the heavens, and to everything that creeps on the earth, everything that has the breath of life, I have given every green plant for food. And it was so. And God saw everything that he had made, and behold, it was very good. There was evening, and there was morning the sixth day. Thus the heavens and the earth were finished, and all the host of them. And on the seventh day, God finished his work that he had done, and he rested on that seventh day from all his work that he had done. So God blessed the seventh day, and he made it holy, because on it God rested from all his work that he had done in creation. These are the generations of the heavens and the earth when they were created. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our second reading for this day is from the book of Acts, chapter 2. Peter, standing with the eleven, he lifted up his voice and he addressed them. Men of Israel, hear these words. Jesus of Nazareth, a man attested to you by God with mighty works and wonders and signs that God did through him in your midst, as you yourselves know. This Jesus, delivered up according to the definitive plan and acknowledge of God, You crucified and killed by the hands of lawless men. God raised him up, loosing the pangs of death, as it was not possible for him to be held by it. For David says concerning him, I saw the Lord always before me, for he is at my right hand that I may not be shaken. Therefore my heart was glad, my tongue rejoiced, my flesh also will dwell in hope. For you will not abandon my soul to Hades, or let your Holy One see You have made known to me the past. You will make me full of gladness with your presence. Brothers, I may say to you with confidence about the patriarch David that he both died and was buried, and his tomb is with us to this day. Being therefore a prophet and knowing that God had sworn with an oath to him that he would set one of his descendants on his throne, he foresaw and he spoke about the resurrection of the Christ, that he was not abandoned to Hades, nor did his flesh see corruption. This Jesus God raised up, and of that all we are witnesses, being therefore exalted at the right hand of God, having received for the Father the promise of the Holy Spirit. He has poured out this that you yourselves are seeing and hearing. For David did not ascend into the heavens, but he himself says, The Lord said to my Lord, Sit at my right hand until I make your enemies your footstool. Let all the house of Israel therefore know for certain that God has made him, both Lord and Christ, this Jesus whom you crucified. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Gospel according to St. Matthew, the 28th chapter. Now the eleven disciples went to Galilee, to the mountain to which Jesus had directed them. When they saw him, they worshipped him, but some doubted. Jesus came and he said to them, All authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Go therefore. Make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe all that I have commanded you. Behold, I am with you always to the end of the age. This is the Gospel of the Lord. This time, usually on Holy Trinity Sunday, we confess our faith in the words of the Athanasian Creed, but we're going to reserve that for a time where we are joined all together. So we continue with the confession of the triune God, which is stated in the Apostles' Creed. We confess our Christian faith in the Apostles' Creed at this time. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, 
born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Continue with our sermon hymn, hymn number 717, 717, Eternal Father, Strong to Save. bow your heads and pray with me. Lord, may the words of my mouth and the meditations of our hearts and minds be acceptable in your sight, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. Grace, mercy, and peace be unto you from God, our Heavenly Father above, who gives us every good and perfect gift. Amen. Evil! This was shouted from my children's bathroom not long ago. Like any parent, I came running to see what had conspired, only to find my children there laughing as they brushed their teeth, saying that word, evil. What in the world are you laughing at? Why do you shout the word evil? Is it the toothpaste making you look like you're possessed? What's going on here? What is happening? These were the questions I posed to them. I initially didn't see anything out of the ordinary, just two children brushing their teeth, looking in the mirror. But then I was pointed to look in the mirror myself. Dad, my shirt 
says evil when you look at it in the mirror. And I was taught by my children there on that day, when you wear one of these Thrivent shirts, the, the Live Generous, look at it in the mirror. Don't right now, don't get one out and go to the mirror. But when you look at one of these in the mirror, Live looks like evil. It's either one or the other, depending upon your perspective of how you look at it. See, perspective, it changes everything on how we see life. It's what takes place in our gospel reading for the day, commonly known as the Great Commission. One of the most popular readings of Scripture as Jesus addressing his disciples before his ascension back to his heavenly throne at the end of the gospel account according to Matthew. There. It's there where Jesus gives direction. It's there we hear who still is in control of everything and who gives power and authority over everything as he yields it. He yields all that power that he has to his disciples, to you, and to me. God Almighty, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit are explained to be united as one. They are to be that name above all names. The singular use of in the name in verse 19, followed by then those three persons, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, it notes that there is a difference between the persons, yet they are one unified substance, one essence of the divine God. The triune God, He is the one and the only who unites all people, who gives them all what He has to give. He makes us all one through that work accomplished by Jesus Christ and Him alone. But in that lies the problem. Verse 17 stated, When they saw him, Jesus, they worshipped him, but some doubted. Some theologians may say this doubt is the kind of doubt that lacks faith, it lacks a belief. This is not true. Looking back at the original meaning behind doubt, or distazo in the Greek, this setting and context, it really describes what in better terms would be an uncertainty, or better yet, a hesitation. A hesitation about how this course of action is being taken and why it's being taken by an individual or party. In this instance, Jesus. Now, do not get the situation wrong here. The disciples had faith. That faith was evident. But yet, there were those disciples in that midst that were doubting if this was the right course of action, if this really was the right thing to do. But what was happening was an uncertainty towards the mode and the method that Jesus was providing for them, that Jesus was giving to them. Jesus was reiterating here in our gospel ring for this morning, who had all power, who had all authority, and exactly what is supposed to be done with it. Jesus was giving his disciples, Jesus was giving us all power and authority in heaven and on earth. So what are we to do? What are we to do with what Jesus gives to us? The gospel's power and authority is because Jesus accomplished he gave what can never be taken out of context. By doing so, though, in our words, in our thoughts, in our ways, we lessen it. We lessen the gospel. We even negate it in some instances, that full effect that it has on our lives as Christians. But Jesus is letting us know this day. Brothers and sisters, this is an all-or-nothing occasion. This is an all-or-nothing approach by Jesus. It's either you truly have all authority in heaven on, on earth, 
or you don't. Jesus Christ is not giving his disciples, he's not giving you or I, he's not saying here, here's some of it, this will do, this will get you through, you'll do all right with some of it. Instead, the gospel, it dominates our lives, it dictates all aspects of our lives, as it and it only is what really gives us a true hope in which we need. It and it only instills in us an everlasting peace that will last throughout time and it and it only bears full restoration for us from this fallen and sinful world in which we live in because as my children taught me by looking in the mirror it's either we live in Christ or we live controlled by evil by sin by the devil the fear of death. Questioning, though, the power and the authority of God, it's nothing new in life. In fact, it's one of the oldest arguments against the divine God, against his power, against his authority. Immediately following the Old Testament reading for the day about the creation account, which is found in the book of Genesis, we see that old evil foe Satan already questioning mankind as he has Eve begin to think, did God really say that? Did God really mean that? Questioning the divinity of God, it can lead us down a dark road indeed. Did God really create the universe by just speaking and out of nothing everything came to be did God do it really in that time frame as told by scripture did God really do those miraculous acts recorded throughout the books of the old and new testaments did God really could God really did God did God the son truly die on the cross for all of your sins did Jesus really physically rise from the dead or was he merely sleeping? Does God, does God Almighty really have all authority and power? When we begin to question God, when we begin to question his word, where does it end? How can we know what is the truth? What can we believe in? Paul responds to these thoughts in a letter to the church in Corinth. For now, if Christ is proclaimed as raised from the dead, how can some of you say that there is no resurrection of the dead? For if there is no resurrection of the dead, then not even Christ had been raised. And if Christ had not been raised, then our preaching, it's in vain. Our faith, it's in vain. See, Paul continues to reiterate what doubt over God's full and complete authority and power could do to us as he continues in his letter to the church in Corinth. He says, We then are even found to be misrepresenting who God is because we testified about God that he raised Christ whom he did not raise if we believe it is not true that the dead are not raised. For if the dead are not raised, not even Christ has been raised. If Christ has not been raised, your faith is futile, and you are still in your sins. Then also those who have fallen asleep in Christ, they have perished, perished eternally. If in Christ we have hope in this life only, we are of all people the most to be pitied. But we know differently. We are not to be pitied. But we know who has the complete power. We know who has all power and all authority. It's Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ has been given all authority in heaven and on earth, just as he said. And now, now he presents and yields that power to us that power of truth, to go and to declare it unto all the nations. To go. To go and let all people of all places know 
where true power lies, where real authority comes from. It comes from the gospel of Christ. That's where it always is and always will be. See, we're given more than just a command in this great commissioning because just as it says, we are given a commissioning. That commission means that you are to go. Now hearing this word, you are to go and to spread that message, that purest, most powerful message of hope, the only way of restoration for this world. And this world desperately needs to hear it. Does it not? We aren't just to hear this gospel message that Jesus Christ has all power and authority. Jesus Christ accomplished this all for you. His death and resurrection has given you forgiveness of sins, life everlasting. It's given you a hope and it will give you the resurrection. We're not just to hear it and think to ourselves, well, that's, that's nice. As Forrest Gump would say, well, that's just one less thing to worry about. No, we aren't to do that. We are to proclaim this good news, this great message of hope and salvation of what Jesus Christ has done for all people in all places. Jesus Christ has all the power and authority and Jesus Christ gives it unto us. It's from the cross of Christ. Sin and the devil, they have lost their terror. It's from that empty tomb that remains empty to this day. Death no longer has dominion or hold over us. But not only do we have this message, not only do we have its result, as an infomercial would say, but wait, there's more. We are able to add to this family by the power of Christ, by the power of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, we are to add to our family by baptizing people so that they may also know what their identity is. It's no longer found in themselves. It's no longer found in their actions. It's no longer found in the ways and the things of this world. God, who is full of mercy and is of love, is claiming all people to be His own, to be heirs of that heavenly kingdom. We are to grow in this knowledge of this grace as we study and learn His Word. And that Word is the truth in our life that we so desperately need. For it is in that Word that we see that is where authority, that is where power remains. It's in the Word. And it's the Word that has become flesh. And it's that word that is proclaimed unto you, that you are children of the Most High. It's in that word that comes to you, take and eat my body, take and drink my blood. It's in that word that has complete power and authority that nothing of this world can overcome. We have an eternal truth. And it's from the very word of God. And it's been as old as time itself. For we know full and certain God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, He created this world and all of creation. God, three in one, acted on the plan of salvation to save this world and fallen creation through that redemptive work of Jesus Christ and Him alone. The triune God, it still fills us with the power of the Holy Spirit to live our lives not for ourselves, to live our lives not for this world, but we live it to Him. We live it to the Almighty. We live it to the Father who sent His one and only Son. We live it to the Son who went to that cross to die and to rise from the empty tomb. We live it for the Holy Spirit who lives in our hearts and minds. That's who we live for. We live not into ourselves. We live not into this world. We live. We live in the power and the authority of God Almighty. Brothers and sisters, you have been given a great power. And you have been given all power. And this power is from God. This power is to let others know what we have is what this world cannot provide. 
yet even with tremendous power on high, we have even more. We have God who is with us. He has not left us to go out and live in this world the rest of our days. We have God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit who continues to be with us. And how do we know this? Jesus said it to be. And if Jesus said it, it is true. The last verse of our gospel reading for this day. As Jesus ascends, his last words, his last testament to his disciples, his last words to us. Behold, I am. I am. The name of God that was used from the Israelites, that is used for the Lord Almighty, I am with you. How long? Always to the very end of the age. The great I am is with us now. God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, he's not only with us when things are going well and dandy, he's with us in those valleys of life also. He is with us in those joys as well as those tragedies where sin and the ways of this world try to rear their ugly head. But yet, the true triune God remains with us now and forever because he's everywhere with us. He's with us as we are in our homes. He's with us as we travel about. He is with us as we go into our places of work. He is with us as we go in those places and businesses. He is with us wherever we go, for he will never leave or forsake you. He's everywhere, giving us a comfort to cling to, a comfort to keep up that commissioning which he instilled with us. Why? Because all power, all authority has been vested unto us, his people, his brothers and sisters. We are to go to declare to the nations that mercy of God. We are to go to declare that grace that he gives us, that he richly pours out upon us. And we go to show the love that he has shown to us, to display it to the world, the evil world that needs this message. O Trinity of love and power, our people shield in danger's hour. From rock and tempest, fire and foe, protect them wheresoever they go. Thus evermore shall rise to thee glad praises from air and land and sea. God's peace be with you as you go with all power and authority to proclaim the eternal truth of who God is and what he has done for you. Amen. Now the peace that passes our human understanding, keep our hearts and minds in the God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, who is with us now and forever. Amen.
We join our hearts and minds together in prayer. O blessed and holy Trinity, the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, hear now the prayers of your people. Grant to us all things according to your word and promise. In the beginning, Father, your word spoke all things into being, and from nothing you made all that is. Help us, the people of St. Paul, especially Adam, Addison, and Aidan Stevens, Amy Stevens, and Robert and Mary Stevens, to see the imprint of your love in the goodness of creation and to exercise responsible care of all that you have entrusted unto us. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Throughout the ages, Father, your Spirit filled the sin-stained world with hope and called us to repentance and faith. Help us to hear that voice of your word and to respond with faith, confessing you without fear before all manner of people and in every corner of the earth, as you planned long before the world began. Deliver us in Christ, that we may be your own and live according to your commands all of our days. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. In this day and in this time, Father, we thank you for the years and the moments we share with one another. We especially thank you for those couples who are celebrating wedding, their wedding anniversaries this week, for Ed and Nicole Kitzinger, Gary and Darlene Parker, Mark and Linda Kell, Bucky and Robin Houston, Brian and Barb Sword, and Alan and Rita Brown. Continue to be the source of their joy and the foundation of all of our relationships. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. In baptism, you joined us to our Savior's death and resurrection, Father. Guide us that we may live out faithfully the new lives born of water and the Spirit, serving you with all our bodies, minds, souls, and strength. We thank you this day for the gift of new life, of life that you have given to Enoch James, son born to Eli and Rachel James, grandson to Pastor and Irene Paul. Watch over this family as you call Enoch to be a child of your kingdom through the water and the word of baptism. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. In government and law, Father, you work to establish and preserve order, protecting the weak and fostering godly virtue. Bless our president, our governor, all who make, administer, and judge our laws. Deliver the world from the threats of pandemic and tyranny. Preserve the nations in peace. Bless all who defend us in the armed forces, including Brady Kell, Bryn Ravello, Scott Ratke, Ryan Skeels, Brittany Ball, Sam Brockman, Andrew Merrick, Michael McDonald, Alex Curley, Isaac Petter, Scott Lewick, Nick West, Molly Sawyer, and Matthew Martin. Guide those who aid us in emergency and medical fields and who inform us with news. Hinder those who oppress any peoples with mistruth, violence, or fear. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. The hour of trial and the moment of trouble, you are there, Father. Hear us as we cry to you for the sake of the sick, the troubled in mind, the wounded in heart. Especially, we pray for Susie Halsey, Pat Nagel, Jerry Leffler, Bucky Houston, Mark Workman, Jim Kennedy. Kathy Ballow, Sydney Westfall, Vernon Wells, Mike Duncan, Leora Horst, and those that we name in our hearts and minds at this time. Deliver them from affliction as you will. Sustain them in hope with a patient heart and for strength for the day. Lord, in your mercy, Hear our prayer. This hour of worship, Father, you serve us with gifts of your grace, so that forgiven we might know the gift of a clear conscience, and redeemed we may honor you with all that we think, say, and do. Accept the sacrifice of our praise and the tithes and offerings we bring before you. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. All these things, whatever else you know that we need, we pray you to grant us, Father, for the sake of our Savior, Jesus Christ, through whom, whom, with whom, and in whom, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory, honor are yours, Almighty Father, both now and forever. Amen. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. 
Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not unto temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you his peace. Amen. Our closing hymn for this day is hymn number 506. 506, Glory Be to God the Father. Thanks.